where I buy my model engineering supplies part 4 workshop tools and steam fittings this is a long overdue replacement for the chuck on my Boxford lathe the old chuck although it was still quite accurate was a bit too small and before I fit the new one I'm giving the spindle a good clean inside and out so when I fit the new chuck it will be accurate and here is the new chuck very nicely made the first thing to go will be the chuck key spring I really hate these I just never leave the chuck key in the chuck the next piece of tooling is the rotary table I've shown this quite a few times it's quite small and neat and swivels from vertical to horizontal and it's okay particularly for what it cost it seems to do everything that I need it to do this is an interesting piece of tooling it's part of a set of wobblers or wigglers very useful things for finding centers when you're machining this is a small proxon milling machine I don't use it very often but it can be useful for very small jobs this also came from RDG tools but I didn't buy it directly I bought it from a friend of mine who had bought it from RDG tools my friend used to use this for drilling circuit boards and I didn't have a machine vice but I bought this one once again from RDG tools it's very good quality a tool like this can also be useful for smaller drilling jobs the drill press holds proxon motor tools and it came complete with its own machine vice and here you can see it's making short work of drilling holes in this piece of brass I recently rearranged my workshop and here's a shot of all the proxon tools that I have quite a few really but they are extremely useful for a variety of jobs I bought this a while back it's an ER40 collet set complete with an ER40 collet chuck I couldn't seem to get anything to run perfectly accurately which really defeats the object of using collets the collet chuck was okay but I think the collet sets which were very cheap and in my opinion not very good at all by the way here's a good tip for cleaning the spindle threads using an electric toothbrush from poor quality collets to a really excellent piece of equipment this one is called a drill doctor 750x and it's a twist drill sharpener I bought it from amazon.co.uk normally I would sharpen twist drills by hand and eye coordination and a lot of experience but this makes it totally simple and completely foolproof no longer do I have to use my brain or my eyesight which is not as good as it used to be you have to use one of these things to appreciate just how good they are very very simple and this model will sharpen a twist drill up to three quarters of an inch in diameter when I'm piping exhaust systems on most small models I will use quarter inch pipe and I usually use PM research elbows PM research is an American company but to save delivery time I buy them from a company called Forest Classics in the UK I always need to run a quarter by 40 tap through them because American quarter by 40 is a slightly different pitch to the ones in the UK the PM research range is quite vast really they sell a lot of things from boilers to steam engines to generators and also these really nice little whistle and valve assemblies they work well this is on quite a low pressure I fitted it to this vintage traction engine and I really think it looks good most of the time I use the same steam fittings these are from a company called CME engineering owned and run by a friend of mine mr. Chris English these along with Jubilee fittings are really popular steam fittings Chris's father Don English and his brother David English run Jubilee fittings and a few years ago they shared a workshop and Chris used to stamp a letter C on the tops of check valves and water gauges and that was so they didn't get the parts mixed up the boiler in this clip has a Jubilee fitting safety valve and a CME engineering steam tap over now to tell you about Jubilee fittings these are a pair of injectors that David at Jubilee fittings made specially for me on this Clarkson 5 inch gauge sterling single the injectors are very visible and I didn't want to use the normal hexagon type these look a lot better in my opinion the normal type of Jubilee fittings can be seen just about everywhere here's an example this one's about 27 years old 
and it's recognisable as being a Jubilee fittings injector because it has a hexagon body, but not all of Jubilee fittings are like this. Here's an example of some other types of injectors that they make. I wish my silver soldering was as good as this. These are fabricated, they are not castings. Some of them have proper flanges with little bolts that hold the flange in place. But the parts that you solder the pipe to are separate inserts. And here's a match made in heaven. Taps by CME Engineering and the injector by Jubilee Fittings. They produce another type of injector which is slightly different. This one is built using a cross between scale and accessibility. These are much easier and quicker to remove than undoing the small bolts. This is a small pair of vertical injectors and I'm sure at some time in the future I will find an application for them. Here's a Jubilee Fittings injector, unpainted and fitted to a locomotive and just about to start working. I opened the water valve, opened the steam valve and now I'm slowly shutting the water valve and suddenly it starts to inject and this is at £30 per square inch which is right at the bottom of its range. This is a Stuart 504 boiler and most of the fittings on it are actually Stuart fittings available from www.stuartmodels.com On this particular boiler I split the feed to the original check valve by using two CME engineering check valves on a T-piece. And that is it. This is part four of four videos showing where I buy all of my bits and pieces. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.